overall could find themselves in trouble if they get too greedy with tyres. They do need to stretch them to get to the end. He's all over the back of him one more time, coming out of turn 11. It was cheerleading from Al in the background. Nothing to do with engineering there a moment ago. It was complete sports psychology, wasn't it? He wants him to understand what it means to the men and women in there, and he's given him a little rough up here to unsettle him. That's what he's looking for. Yeah, that's rude. That's rude. Push on, mate. Push on. Brody oh, knows. Like that. 15 that a, to go. 15 to go. Brody knows that a bump and run could get him in trouble as well. So what he's trying to do here at the moment is unsettle him, and that'll be happening when you cop a whack from somebody like that. He'll be careful to control the anger, and he gets it all out of shape. Reynolds crossed the top of the island that time and had to protect himself by going straight through. There is some signs here that the pressure is on, and we've got 15 laps. Fight is the word from his employers. His engineer, Alistair McVeigh, is telling him to get stuck in, put your head down, get your elbows up, do not give these blokes one millimetre. Brody's on him once again as they make their run up towards the turn 11 left-hander. This is where he's been very strong and he niggled him coming out of the final corner on the previous lap. He just gave him a slap in the rear of it. Just... And Van Gisbergen's angry and animated on the radio in the background. Something was a joke. He's 13 seconds off the lead and he's expressing enormous frustration. Back to the lead though. And it's another little touch up. And he had to back away from him. He gave him such a whack then that there was a lot of opposite lock required to recover. Reynolds is under extreme pressure here. Next time through, it's 14 to go. Brody's rattling on him. He's trying to unsettle him out of position. He must be very careful of a bump and run. If he pushes him and gains from it, he'll get a penalty. And he's got to be so careful. He's got to be so careful, and he's done it. He's done it. He's held him up high as they make their way out of turn four. David pushes him back across to the left side of the road. Now they've got to sort out this arrangement here. Who's got right of way? And Brody gets it done. Brody gets it done. 13 odd laps remaining for the next one. I'm not sure that he's got the firepower to be able to do anything about it. I think Brody's got a tiny edge at the moment. Great race, though. That was a great race. Very, very aggressive from the championship leader. That really, so that's another 12 points. It was 140 points before. That number that you can see on your screen now stretches it out to just over one race in terms of point score value. And this is what we're talking about. So bang, gives him a serve up, stays right out of the throttle, didn't continue to bump him. So all that's fair game at that point. Then the run off the first chicane, off turn three, down the inside of turn four. They run a little bit wide together. They hold themselves up. There's a little bit of side drafting between them. And then it goes to the next corner where, as you can see now, we're on board looking over the top of the Mustang and the little bit of a kink there and a little bit of a run as they approach to the fast chicane and the rule that they've got is they're driving the left-hand side has right of way, and that's in the driver notes. So Kaseki was able to prevail, but that was very aggressive. Thomas Randall and Mark Winterbottom, meantime, are in a great battle here, 10th and 11th at the moment. Same thing. Same thing. Yep. Uh, the 150 metre mark, just at that braking marker on the run into the beach chicane. They need to resolve and sort out the priority there. That was given to them in the driver briefing notes pre-event. Rihanna. Yeah, and a bad day gets even worse for Shell V Power Racing. Anton Di Pasquale into the garage. They've been managing an electrical issue. That car's been cutting in and out, so just a disaster all round for them. It's been a tough weekend for them, hasn't it? What a shame. And a difficult run in qualifying as well. Martin's out to 0.4 of a second now. Kostecki over Reynolds. Car number 14 he's also got a bad sportsmanship flag for exceeding track limits. Bryce forward. Got a nice little battle continuing here, though, between Cam Waters and James Golding. This is for the podium. They're eight seconds from the lead. Now, the other question here with 12 to go, Mark, is how much energy have Brody and David taken from their tyres? And is this going to advance the causes of Cam oh, Waters? Oh, he's wide. He's wide. He just ran wide. 
Kostecki just outbraked himself. And Reynolds gets back down the inside. Wow. That's a very, very strong manoeuvre by David Reynolds. Come from a little mistake by Kostecki. And that's not over. This is not over at all. Alistair McVeigh just said to Reynolds before that move was on, give him a taste of his own medicine is what it was. Come on, Davey. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. He's into him. He's cheerleading and coaching hard, Alistair McVeigh. So he's back in front. He's got track position one more time. But the question here that I'm wondering out loud is how much are they hurting? He's looking in the mirror to see where he is in the braking area into turn four and whether or not he needs to cover. But how much energy are they taking from the tie because they've gone into sprint mode and we've still got 11 laps to go. So does that play an advantage here for Waters and Golding who are battling for the next spot on the podium for third and fourth? but it's hard to take your eyes from this at the moment. The respective garages are glued to the monitors as well. They're seeing exactly the same images, plus all the micro sectors on the timing. So a nice little comeback here for David Reynolds. And that gentleman that you saw on the left-hand side of screen is the engineer, and they've been a duo for a long period of time. On the last lap, they, David was 13th fastest. Gostecki was 19th. This is the mistake. Trying to get it stopped, he just overrun the corner slightly. David was able to capitalise. There was a little bump in the run down to the next corner, and in the end, David was able to prevail on the inside. These blokes are hurting their tyres. For sure. They're hurting their tyres, and we're a long way out still. So keep an eye on Waters and Golding here. These replays are also showing us that there's a lot of time burning in this process as well. So they're only seven odd seconds away in the background here. Reynolds is still... control to all teams. Five second time penalty to car nine for exceeding track limits. Brown cops are five seconds. He's sitting in seventh at the moment. Most it's got that hanging over him. So is LeBrock, Hill and Davison also. Reynolds back in control after being hunted by Kostecki. 0.39 of a second officially is the margin. They will be right at the ragged edge of the life of these tyres, trying to get them to the end with this sort of pace. And the world order was restored in the last lap because the two fastest cars were these. So they, after they were battling, next lap, Reynolds was fastest, Kostecki was second fastest. We'll give you those numbers in a second because they're turning it on now. Your point about how hard they've used the tyre, how's that there? 11, 9, 12 dead on the previous lap. Up, We've got nine to go, nine to go. Nine laps to go there. Alice McVeigh has been absolutely crucial with his input with David today. 11.97 for David Reynolds. 11.94 for Brody Kostecki. Now you look at their best, it was at 11.5 early in the day for David and 11.6 for Brody. The delta between the current and the best is only half a second. That's impressive at this point of the weekend. Cam Waters is 7.9 seconds away in third place. He's got his hands full at the moment with a one second margin over James Golding. And if you're Barry Ryan and George Commons on the radio to Brody at the moment, you have to be really measured now. You have to be measured with nine laps to go. If you can win it, great, but you can't win it or bin it now. You've got to have your championship front and center. It's a different scenario to yesterday where Waters so hungry for a victory, but it was the opposite. He was quite prepared to turn it into a canoe, rip the wheels off it if need be, fight to the death. It's not the same situation for Brody. He's our championship leader. A misstep for him changes the context of the championship enormously. Al's given us the call, eight to go. Eight times three, three kilometers around this racetrack. Reynolds is clinging on here. Remember, he's on the move at the back end of the year. He's changing team. Richie Stanaway comes into Penrite Racing in 2024. Reynolds will be saying goodbye, and he's off to Team 18. Right now, though, he's only interested in one thing, race victory on the Gold Coast. He's done it before, back in 2013, and he's got a little taste of it going here at the moment. Now, oh, Golding... there's going to be a massive shot. That was unbelievable. He spun that car around, and Scott Byer had no to go. Okay, mate, you're good. You going? What was all that about? So I think there was contact with. I saw Golding. the movement on the computer. So Pi's got damage. He may not get it back. We might get a safety car late in the game here. 
There's nothing going on up the front here in terms of a margin. They are locked together. Forget about the computer. He is stopped out there. Yeah, he's going to have to now, that This out. is going to be a problem. What a headache for race control. But this is going to have the effect if they throw the SC boards and the yellow flags of potentially pulling the field up. He has a look down the inside, Kostecki, as they make their way into the braking area, into one. And he's got the thing crossed up again, David Reynolds. He had it skating on the rear tyres, and he's only just barely got out the other side. So now we've got seven laps to go in this high-pressure scenario. Safety car boards and flags, oh, safety no. car boards and flags. Safety car to recover the Hino car of Scott Pye. Safety car for green flags, green flags. What's he do? Does he go straight away, or does he hold them up like Brody did earlier? Goes straight away. Going. Just yep. getting on with it. That's a nice job. He just cracked the throttle, got on with got the job of race go. driving. Go. Like no games. So this is all about a sprint race <laughs> to the end. Drive like your life depends on it. Four remaining. 12 kilometres. David Reynolds is searching for a victory. Did he give those tyres a yep. rub then on cold tyres? If he didn't, he went mighty close to it. They're down at the turn four hairpin. He's got a car and a half length advantage as he pops out the other side the championship leaders behind him cam waters in third position matt payne next in the queue then it's shane van gisberg and he's got the lights on how was that commitment at the first chicane by david reynolds he turned to the right it absolutely escaped sideways he used everything and used the tires to straighten himself up davy's done a great job on this lap Yep, he's done a beautiful job on this lap. He's made a tiny little bit of margin. Every millimetre matters right at the moment. Have a look at the stress with all the personnel down in that garage. And look at that. The two protagonists at the front have gapped everybody. They've gapped them all. There's a second to the next car. Oh, we've got problems here for Hazelwood pointing in the wrong direction now as well. Is he going to be able to clear that space? We've now got three laps remaining. 0.4 of a second. Has Brody got anything by way of response? He made that little mistake. He yielded the lead. That was cleaner that time through for Reynolds. This is where Brody's been very, very quick through the weekend. Heading north now, out of the turn four hairpin. Reynolds holds his advantage. Waters of pain have dropped off a little bit, so the eyes are clearly focused now on these guys. They do have pace in hand. Hazelwood has been able to move that car. He's clear now. He's skipping away. He is. Reynolds is skipping away ever so gently. It's 0.56 of a Race second. Control all teams. Bad sportsmanship flag to car 19 for exceeding track limits. Matt Payne in fourth position has just been given a critical warning about exceeding as well. That's him right there in behind Cam Waters. And he's just in front of Van Gisbergen. Someone's cranky on the radio asking that a protest be put in, but I'm not sure who it was. Did you catch who it was? No, I was trying to read the scanner as to who that was. So two laps to go. Alistair McVeigh has turned from engineer to sports psychologist this afternoon. And he's doing everything he can to keep David Reynolds motivated, concentrating on the task ahead. Three times this year, David Reynolds has been on the podium for third positions. Can he pull off something big on the Gold Coast this afternoon? At the moment, he's got 0.6 of a second in hand. He's driving for his own pride. He's driving for the pride of the team. He's driving for Penright and everybody at Grove that have been working so hard in this program. He had a problem with the brake bias yesterday. It ended up full forward and overheated those front brakes. And he's managing every millimetre of this racetrack at the moment to try and cling to a possible victory. For Brody Kostecki, the complexion of this is entirely different. He's the championship leader. He's got 104 points in his back pocket at the moment. He's already got six victories to his credit. He can't afford a mistake or a penalty. He's just given him another little tickle up out of the final corner. Next time round, it is one lap to go. It's 2,900 metres of racetrack. Can Reynolds hang on for this nail biter? The second day in a row, we've got a cracking race on the Gold Coast. Reynolds hangs on into turn one. He's got the slide going. That's the second or third time we've seen him do it. The thing broke wide, and that'll raise some eyebrows up and down the lane. That protects.
protect any more so down at the hairpin. Right it certainly did. And so, 11 and 5. Last lap, Brody Kostecki just did the fastest lap of the race, and everyone's blowing up deluxe about him going through that first chicane. That will certainly raise eyebrows, as I said a few moments ago. The back of the car, though, had broken loose, and there'll be a lot of discussion about that one later, and it's crossed up again on the run into Turn 11. Right at the moment, Reynolds has only got four corners remaining, separating him from victory. He's still got a car length in hand. Now he points it into the sun, down towards 14 and 15 for the last time. We'll come back to all the sporting and political questions later. He's getting a rough up from Brody. He's out the other side. And David Reynolds is able to put the pedal to the metal and stitch together a race victory on the Gold Coast for the first time since 2018 for him back in victory lane. What a cracking race. What a cracking race between those two. Racing. Big moment for Stephen and Brenton Grove, for the men and women in that team, and a huge moment for David Reynolds. The sparkle in those eyes says it all.